Hi guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn about actually getting data from our users so that our programs can start being a bit more dynamic. Imagine you've got your name and it's Jose and you want the user's name, but how do you get it? Do you expect the user to edit the program so that they can put their name in here? Finally, what you want to do is to print, you know, something like, hello, your name, my name is my name. Let's say we have a simple program like this. So how do you get the user's name? Because if you run this right now, you'll get hello, empty string, my name is Jose. If the user has to come in and edit the program, then, you know, this will work, right? But how are you going to share this with users that don't know any programming? So what we have to do is we have to first ask the user for their name, allow them to type something here in this text console, and then use that name inside our program. So here is where the input function comes in. So we will type input, enter your name. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up a prompt here in the console. And notice that the program is stopped until we press the enter key. So if I type Rolf now, then you'll see that we get back, hello Rolf, my name is Jose. This tells you one thing about the input function, which is that the thing that the user typed came back to us and it must have been a string because it contains characters. It is not an integer and it is not a float. Otherwise, you know, it would have to be numbers and you would be able to do maths on it. So it must be a string. And that is something that always happens with the input function. Anything the user types, even if it is the number 35, is a string. A string that contains the characters 3 and 5. With that in mind, let's try something else. Let's try asking the user for their age. And then we're going to print, you have lived for age times 12 months. So a very popular first program, we're going to ask the user for their age. And then we're going to say, for example, imagine they enter three there. We're going to say you have lived for 36 months, right? But remember that the age variable has a string in it. The input function always gives you back a string, even if you enter a number. So we aren't turning this into a number. What is going to happen when we multiply a string by 12? Well, let me type three in here. And you get three, 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 three. You get 12 threes. Because age times 12 is more or less the same as age plus age plus age plus age 12 times. And remember what happens when we add two strings together? They get joined together. They get concatenated. So by multiplying a string by a number, really what you're getting is 12 of those strings. What you have to do is you have to turn it into an integer. So the same way that we used str to turn a integer or a, another number into a string, we can use int or int to turn a string into an integer. So we will turn age into an integer and put it inside age underscore num. And then we will do age num times 12. And that works just as well. Now, something important about Python that you're going to see quite a lot is that when you evaluate one of these things here, that becomes the value that the user has given you. So here's what I mean. This text that I've got selected here is three when your program runs. So if the user is going to enter three in your program, this entire text I've got selected is exactly identical to you just typing three in there. Means exactly the same thing. Of course, the user can enter something different if they'd like. So this is why this is a dynamic value. But if they enter three, it's the same thing as having three in there. If they enter 35, it's the same thing as having 35 in there. So we could do age equal int of 35, right? And then we would not need 
this age num there, and we could do this. But how do we get the dynamic value instead of the static 35 string? We use the input function that we had just a moment ago. So you can do this in Python because the things inside the brackets always run first. So the input function will run and the program will wait until the user presses enter. And then this entire selected text will be replaced by what the user enters. For example, the string three. And then we will pass that to the int function, which will give us an integer equivalent to the string that we got passed. So we will get the integer three. And then we will put that inside age. This type of nesting is very common and you will be doing this quite often. However, it's also easy to, you know, go a bit overboard with it. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to nest like 20 times. Otherwise, the code gets almost unreadable. But a couple of functions inside each other can actually shorten your code and make it a bit easier to read. Remember, what we had before is we had an age variable and then we also have an age num variable. But the age variable was only useful to calculate age num. It wasn't used anywhere else in our program. So it's kind of pointless to keep it around. We might as well nest these here and only have one variable that we actually want and use and not have two variables, one of which is pointless. Now, instead of doing the multiplication inside the f string, which you can do, we can separate this into a new variable. Why might you do that? Well, the main reason for separating a value like that into a variable is so that you can give it a name that has meaning. Now, when you read this program, it's pretty obvious that first you're getting the user's age, then you're calculating how many months that equals to, and then you're printing that out. And it's quite obvious because your variable is called months. If your variable was called x, then it might not be so obvious until you read through the entire thing. Giving variables good names, good descriptive names, is a bit of an art form and it can be quite tricky at times, but it's really important. You will get better at it over time. In the next lecture, we've got a small exercise for you, which is to, instead of printing the number of months the user has lived for, you can print the number of seconds they have lived for. Just slightly different maths here, but more or less the same. Do try to complete that exercise on your own without looking back at this code, and if you've forgotten how to do it, then do look back, of course, so that you can complete the exercise. Through practice and through typing code, you're going to learn much faster than just by watching the videos. That's everything for this one, though. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with the exercise.